Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, Life After Jihadist Occupation, we take you to Benghazi in Libya, where the people are slowly rebuilding their lives amid the ruins of the port city. Much of Benghazi was flattened in the battle to defeat the Islamic State group. Now, life is becoming more normal, but with regular reminders of how it used to be and why it's vital to get Libya on track for a peaceful and prosperous future. Libya, since the fall of dictator Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, has been riven by conflict. Armed groups have looked to take their slice of the country. And while there are two governments, Tripoli and uh, Tobruk, staking their claim, there are many who just want to get on with their lives. Our report starts with one such man in Benghazi, and as you'll find, his daily life veers from peace to danger at a moment's notice. Our report's by Eric de la Varenne, Thierry Trier and Ruth Mikkelsen. Mahmoud has taught music in Benghazi for 20 years. After years of war, he shares his passion with children more used to the sound of Kalashnikov fire than the peaceful sound of an oud. Even so, the war has once again disturbed Mahmoud's lesson for the day. I got a phone call. We found a suspicious device. It could be a landmine. I need to go and take a look. If it is a mine, I'll have to deactivate it. As music isn't enough to erase the traces of a conflict that is far from over, this music teacher also works in mine disposal. The center of Benghazi, an area only recently reclaimed from Islamic State extremists, who left behind hundreds of homemade mines. Even though he's not a soldier, Mahmoud puts on military fatigues. He is one of many ordinary citizens in Benghazi who have volunteered to help the army clear the city of any remaining explosives. Ah, it's a rocket fragment. These explosives are very much homemade. Mm. It's a detonator, but it's safe. The locals here tell us if they see suspect devices, even if they're not dangerous. Come see, there's something else this way. Is it close by? Yes. Can you follow me, Mahmoud? Someone in the neighborhood has just discovered an unexploded bomb. Faced with a 500 kilogram device, Mahmoud knows his own limits. This is a huge bomb, a container filled with explosives. It could go off at any moment. I'll have to report it. With a small device, I'd have been able to do something to intervene immediately and defuse it. But with this, I can't do anything. For a bomb like this, you need a specialist team. I'll go and see the military first thing tomorrow morning. I'll come back with them to make sure they can take care of this bomb. And afterwards, we're at God's mercy. Every month, dozens of people are killed by landmines. Mahmoud has been wounded three times, in his shoulder and his legs. But he keeps going. This is the price Benghazi is paying to erase its darkest hours. In the period following the 2011 revolution, jihadists seized part of the city. Field Marshal Haftar, the strongman of East Libya, united civil and militant groups to liberate it. The battle took four years and left Benghazi on its knees. 40% of the buildings and infrastructure were destroyed. In the last pockets to be liberated, residents are slowly returning. Like Ahmed, they are using limited means to try and make a bomb site inhabitable once again. I come here every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
but not beyond that, as there's no electricity. I'm trying to put my house back in order, bit by bit. I've never received any kind of aid. The authorities know my situation, but they have no money. Yet just a couple of kilometers away, Libya's second city presents an entirely different picture. Shops closed by Islamists have reopened. Luxury boutiques and brand new shopping malls attract clients hungry to buy. After years of exile in the United States, Mawada is finally returning home. This young woman dreamt of opening a beauty school, the first of its kind in the country. Her classes have found success in this moment of renewed peace. In our color palette, there are semitones. You all know about semitones, notably with gold and silver shades. Yeah, even my family don't like the idea when I told them about makeup. They thought it's makeup, it's, I mean, you have to uh, take care about your study, take care about your job, uh, take care about your career. Don't, I mean, it's something, it's not important for them. So uh, I made this like a business or a, a career for me, and I'm trying to improve it. Mawada is sponsored by a local cosmetic store in exchange for publicity. I think I Starting a business in a drained economy such as Libya's requires some creativity. Hello. It's really hard because the makeup is expensive, so I can't do this without his help. He should help me to do this. If he didn't give me the makeup, I can't do this. It's going to be really expensive if I start with my own. I mean, uh, with no one supports me. Okay. With financial institutions struggling, Mawada and other business people like her are filling in the gaps. Banks are constantly searching for hard cash. When there isn't any, they found a way to overcome their liquidity problem. They pay their clients on their mobile phones. How much is it? 825 dinar. OK, I'll send you the message. Thank you. I have a deal with the bank where I get a share of the money received. Then I go to the black market to buy dollars so I can buy goods from abroad. For four years, the black market has been an integral part of the Libyan economy. Shadow trading has sustained an economy that is hanging by a thread. Benghazi's fate also hangs in the balance in terms of security. At the start of the year, a series of attacks left the city in mourning. The deadliest claimed 40 lives. A day later, shock and contemplation gave way to anger and the desire for revenge. I warn the population of Benghazi, keep an eye on your sons, in case they are tempted to help jihadist groups by carrying their weapons and their bombs. We will catch them all. These threats were put into action. The same day, images spread on social media of a powerful militant assassinating nine prisoners suspected of links to the terrorists. Justice here is quick and often hard to control. The same militants who work alongside the authorities often regard themselves as above the law. <laughs> Identifying who's who isn't easy in Benghazi, where dozens of different uniforms are visible on the streets. It's hard to tell who's military, who's from a militia, or civilians like Mahmoud, the music teacher, and his friend Akram. How are you? I'm OK. What's new? I'm still clearing mines. God help you. 
I see you're back in your military uniform. Yes, after that attack yesterday, we all need to be vigilant and help the army. You're a shopkeeper, I'm a teacher, and we're both wearing our old uniforms. It must be wartime again. I just hope this ends soon. We're all reservists. I work alongside doctors, engineers and teachers who put on their uniforms and pick up arms when the moment calls for it. Field Marshal Haftar has relied heavily on amateur fighters like Mahmoud and Akram to seize power in Benghazi. But now, the strong man of eastern Libya is hoping to do away with these often uncontrollable reservists. He's looking for a unified fighting force to make up a single strong army. In Benghazi, he relies on General Hashem Keza to carry out this mission. Stand up. There it's on. But this new national army is confronting a major problem a lack of finances. The general doesn't hide his dismay. In this class, we have to use these diagrams for weapons training. Because of the international arms embargo, we have no equipment. These officers have to train using diagrams and not the real thing. This is what the world has done to us. Despite their lack of funds, the military is growing stronger as Field Marshal Haftar tightens his grip in Benghazi. After years of chaos, people are relieved at the newfound stability, but worried about a drift towards authoritarianism. In the city's only cultural center, young artists are cautiously reasserting their right to criticize, but it's not easy. They are still forced to consider the real threats to their freedoms very hard to build a place without without being I mean place like the, the, like this without being uh, followed by the security by the government or even by the, the, the society itself every day we are afraid of uh, f I mean being attacked or uh, of anything we do after four years of violence, the citizens of Benghazi are desperate for peace. And a time when music teachers will no longer have to clear minds. Our reporter Eric de Lavarenne joins us uh, now for more on this story. Eric, thanks for your report. Fascinating stuff and clearly lots of work to be done in Libya right now. The country, as you pointed out, cut into two. Tripoli and its government recognised by the international community. Where does Benghazi figure in all of this? Since mid-2014 and the second Libyan civil war, the country has effectively been cut in two politically and Benghazi has become the capital of the east. The city had fallen into the hands of Islamist groups, but the forces that have been fighting them have recaptured the city since November. Benghazi's airport reopened in January. The political authorities which sit in the small town of Tobruk between Benghazi and the Egyptian border were expected to move to Benghazi this year to eventually create the capital of this large eastern region and a large city to rival Tripoli and the western authorities there. And Eric, the question of security throughout the country, it's far from being solved. 
Absolutely. De, de, à, à de, de, Absolutely. As a result of the Libyan Spring in 2011, a number of armed groups emerged and they were scattered around the country. What we call the Second Libyan Civil War from 2014 also contributed to the emergence of more and more armed groups in several towns. That was the case for Benghazi, but it's now been liberated, the town's completely unified. But there are still quite a few Islamic State group sleeper cells there. For example, there were two attacks outside mosques in January. Around 40 people were killed in one of them. And sporadic fighting breaks out throughout the country. We're a long way from re-establishing security in Libya. The electoral process is expected to take place this year, but it's a bit of a gamble and a leap into the unknown. Will this electoral process succeed? And if it does, will it be able to tackle the chronic instability that we've seen in Libya since 2011? Eric, it's seven years since the revolution in Libya began in Benghazi. I wonder what people think about what happened now and how their lives are today. Uh, écoutez, le, 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 ce qu'on ce qu peut uh, uh, entendre uh, comme propos... What you hear a lot in Benghazi is that the revolution achieved its aim of getting rid of the Gaddafi regime, which had ruled for 42 years, but that a high price has been paid for that. And that price is the emergence of these armed groups throughout the country, and especially in the parts most affected by the country being split in two un petit peu partout dans le pays et surtout la partition with de... effectively two capitals Tripoli on one side Benghazi on the other Tripoli d'un côté Benghazi de l'autre et euh, euh, deux capitales qui sont pour le moment irréconciliables For the moment those two capitals are irreconcilable even though the population would like to see a reunified and peaceful country There's a lot of uncertainty this year If the electoral process succeeds Libyans believe this will be a victory for the revolution but if that's not the case, it will regrettably be a victory for insecurity, and Libya will continue to be divided. Ce sera, hélas, la victoire de l'insécurité et toujours ce règne d'une Libye partagée en deux. Eric de Lavarenne, thank you very much for your analysis and your report. And I know you'll keep an eye on that story for us. Thank you very much indeed, our reporter Eric de Lavarenne. That concludes uh, this uh, reporter's program. You can, of course, see it again via our website, francefancat.com. This is reporters. I'm France Fancat. Stay with us.